The show is called Inside the Gold Cup and as it suggests we take a look at the inner workings of the tournament and the teams playing within it. Group B was on display yesterday at day two of the tournament. My name is Dennis Katsanos. With me, uh, fresh from the set of Miami Vice, is, is, this a, uh, <laughs> is this an American thing that you're not supposed to wear socks, gentlemen? No, I don't know. Actually, I've, I've got mine on. You see, we're very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll promise tomorrow I take them off. How's that? I, I don't. I don't compete with Chip. I just go right along with yeah. him. So I, is, I, I feel know. like the odd one out. I'm a bit, bit, bit heartbroken. Well, you are. Tommy. You are. You are. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks very much. Okay. Now, for the Gold Cup, the, the big ticket is the 2009 Confederations Cup in South Africa. John, you've been a part of it. What's it like to play in the Confeds Cup? Uh, first of all, it's, it's always going to be um, a very competitive situation because of the teams that are being represented. Uh, I remember playing yeah. down in the 99 Confederations right. Cup uh, where we competed in our group with yeah, New Zealand. Truly New Zealand, <laughs> which we beat 2-1. Uh, yeah, we thanks competed for against Germany, me. beat them 2-0, and uh, we lost to Brazil, which was a tough group. Um, but having getting through to the next round, we lost to Mexico 1-0, who were the champions. And it was fantastic, great atmosphere. Uh, some of the best players in the world are on display. So, yeah, it's a very prestigious tournament. Did you get to watch the final there at the uh, Azteca where Mexico played Brazil? Did, actually. Plenty of goals to be seen. It's, mm. Like I said the other day, it was like an all-star game. Nobody wanted to defend. It was 4-3. <laughs> seven goals were scored. So, very entertaining and uh, great atmosphere. Really good atmosphere. T in the tough stadium. stadium to play in. Oh, absolutely. You can't breathe, number one. <laughs> and it's very hard to hear yourself speak with so much, so much people in the crowd. Well, in the 2005 Confederations Cup, uh, the world champions, uh, the Brazilians at uh, that particular point, uh, were there. It was hosted in Germany, which of course hosted the 2006 FIFA Confederations Cup, with uh, Brazil taking it out. Uh, and it's just, it is a, one of the most spectacular tournaments uh, you ever get to participate in. Yeah, there's no question. And, and as we talk about, you know, what the Gold Cup means, I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's what they're playing for. But there are other components to it. We, we've talked before about the elevated status quality of play in CONCACAF and what it means for the clubs, for the nations to play in this Gold Cup. There's also another component, and I think it's, it's really the player. They're mm. playing for their country first, but they're also playing for themselves because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there are scouts from all over the world, European teams, they're looking at the Gold Cup they're looking for players that they may want. And, and for some of the smaller countries, uh, I noticed the prize money's been boosted from 330000 to 660 with a 150000 uh, for the winner. That's US dollars, which can go a long way in some countries. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think whether it's the, the prize money itself, I think it's just self, you know, pride uh, mm. that you're playing for within your country. And Chef makes a very good point as well that, you know, these players are on display. They're getting mm. an opportunity here, and even the Minnows, we're talking about Guadalupe, it's the yeah. first time in the tournament. They get to be seen. These are players that are undiscovered at times. Mm. So you compete here, you play well, you want to be the CONCACAF Gold Cup champions. You want to get the purse as well, which is great, and they might have their own, uh, yeah. and I'm sure, and Chef's well, been there as an agent, they have their own mm. money coming to them through the Federation bonuses. So yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot to play for here. Well, let me ask you, gentlemen, and I'll, I'll start with you, John. Um, playing in some major tournaments, did you ever have anyone approach you after and go, Hey, John Hikes, you know, do you want to come and play for my club? Uh, absolutely. That's how I got my start in England. That's what I that was yeah. Ron Atkinson. Exactly. Uh, I was on trial with Sheffield Wednesday, January, prior to the Italian World Cup in 1990. He said, I'll see how you do over there. When I got to uh, Italy, played, you know, we lost all three games. But individually, I think players, you know, stood out. And that's what Shep's talking about right now. And when you have that opportunity on the world stage to be seen, you know, mm. it gives you a great chance to maybe launch a career. And that's what happened for me in 1990. I went to Sheffield Wednesday and played in England. You yeah. saw Chip? Yeah. yeah, absolutely the same because I, I had the opportunity to represent the United States in the Olympic Games uh, in Munich, in Germany, and, and signed a professional contract. Uh, from a uh, mm. team in Germany that had watched the game. So it's a launching pad, but you don't think about it uh, when you're playing. Like John said, y you know, it's not the name on the back of the jersey. <laughs> it's really, you know, the name on the front. A special well, feeling when you're playing for your country. And, and that first is what uh, these players are playing for when it comes to Gold Cup. What's the normal process? Does someone uh, approach you personally, or do they approach the team management, or do, do they already know who your agent is, or how do they... How do you go uh, about signing a player in, well, in today's football world? Well, today's football world is completely different than what it was 10 years ago. I mean, I think, uh, you know, sometimes it was just a black bag on the side of your table. <laughs> but, uh, and that's not from personal experience, no. no obviously, you have representation, and um, I think somebody makes a contact, uh, a formal uh, inquiry about the player um, through the agent himself, you know, nowadays. But there's some players, and these are players that we're talking about that are representing in the Gold Cup uh, today, um, that don't have maybe representation. Mm. They haven't played at that stage, and they don't know what it's all about, so they have to go through them personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, back to Gold Cup, and John knows now as a coach that it's really all about 
hey, guys, and I'm sure you tell it to your players in the locker room, guys, if the team wins, if we succeed, if we win a championship, you know, good things will happen to you individually. But it's first about the team. Get the job done. You're here in the United States. Eyes around the world are watching Gold Cup. You know, do your job. Let's win, and good things are going to happen to everybody. Well, Group B kicked off yesterday, which was uh, the USA and Guatemala and also El Salvador and Trinidad and Tobago. When we come back, we look at Game 1 between the USA and Guatemala at the Gold Cup in 2007. Gatorade Sports Science Institute. We test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. Work like a pro. Play like a pro. Tackle tough jobs. Dominate the game. Destroy the competition. Go professional. Choose Makita. Welcome back to Inside the Gold Cup, where the Home Depot Center in California played host to all the matches in Group B yesterday. Yes, in Group B, the USA faced Guatemala and El Salvador, locked horns with Trinidad and Tobago. And John, the USA remains undefeated in group play. Undefeated, and they really start off on a good foot because the defending champions, they came out, they got the three points. Yeah, and Guatemala in trouble. They didn't advance in 2005, never got out of group play. They're in trouble again. Well, if we look at the uh, 22 men that took the field starting uh, with the USA, of course, uh, Bob Bradley, uh, uh, some interesting selections here. Yeah, and I think the most interesting, and this is something that Shep and I discussed earlier on, is that the two midfielders really down the, the, the backbone of the team itself are two young players, not a lot of experience there, Benny Fieldhaber and also Michael Bradley, and that can cause a little bit of a disruption for their flow of play. Well, having a look at the Guatemalan team, uh, of course, Carlos Ruiz, a, a very familiar face here in uh, the MLS. And uh, when we have a look at some of the, uh, the highlights, uh, quite a controversial player on the park. Well, there's no question for Guatemala. You had to figure they're going to leave Carlos Ruiz as a lone striker, try and pack it in at the back, see if they can get something on the counterattack. Now, leading up to the game, what, were this, what was the expectation for the USA? From well, the just, home fans. Well, I, I think that this is a situation that, you know, everything's new. You know, Bob Bradley's a new head coach. You know, what, what style of play are we going to see? There's mm. a lot of new faces there. We just now, discussed that in now, terms of their style of play. Were you surprised at all with the way that he packaged the team? Oh, yeah, for sure I was. Um, and, and you're always going to be surprised. I mean, that's his decision. <laughs> He's the head coach. He can do what he wants. But, you know, tactically, you got to look at the system in terms of, like, is he playing those two to hold side by side? Michael Bradley, is Benny Fieldhaber getting more of a, a free roll, Shep, to go forward in an advanced position? For me, it didn't happen. It seemed like they both were sharing it back and forth in a pulley system, and I think that kind of changed the way the balls were played forward out of the back. Yeah, I think John's absolutely right, because you talk about the U.S. team against Guatemala. Bob Bradley had to be thinking strategically, tactically, that Guatemala is not going to play a wide-open game. They're going to sit back, get 10 behind the ball. Whenever they can counterattack, you know, play an outlet ball to Carlos Ruiz. Yeah, and the other thing, too, uh, Shep and Dennis, is that, you know, you look at the system. For me, I don't like Landon Donovan playing on the right-hand side of mm -hmm. midfield. He's more of a player who needs to be a free roll, attack in midfield, maybe just behind, or even as a lazy withdrawn striker, sitting behind the top man. And for his top man was Taylor Twelman to start with. And for me in the first half, did a quite good job running off the ball, second half, not so good. Something yeah. you guys mentioned to me the other day, and I didn't really notice uh, this to full effect until I started watching the game. A lot of the US, uh, US games, it, it is like you're playing away from home. Uh, what a huge Guatemalan crowd. 
Yeah, that's for sure. But I think John has played in those games and experienced it. You can't worry about it. We have such a diverse country here. <laughs> and, and, and we love the passion of all the different ethnic groups that make up this country. So for the U.S. players, John experienced it. You know, if you're going to play in L.A. or you're going to play in Miami, you're going to find a different, yeah. different makeup. And, and still... Never, ever grow tired of still being frustrated, though, because of that situation. Oh. It, it really, I mean, it does stay with you as a player, and you would love to go out there and walk out. And unfortunately, like Shep said, you know, uh, geographically, we do have a problem in the States. It's such a vast country. It's a massive country. And everybody always says to me, I can remember answering when I was 14, 15 years old, you know, when's soccer going to take off in America? Is it taking off? Is it progressing? And still we're getting those questions today. Yeah, but this is a great stage, so the U.S. <laughs> it is, yeah. it is. It's a, it's a good stage. Very All right, so. well, this is uh, the U.S. fit against Guatemala. <laughs> this one here, this is the first situation leading up into the goal for Dempsey. Great run off the ball, as we said, from Twelman in the first half. He really creates nothing out of something. And this is it, boom. Yeah, Bang in the back of the net. There's Dempsey on the doorstep. Yeah, great little flick by Demarcus Beasley. Taylor Twelman made the run. Now the U.S. continued to push. The Marcus Beasley, I don't know why, he tries to slot that ball. He should have tried to rip it, roof that ball. The U.S. squandered some more opportunities that they had. Yeah, they definitely got to do better with that, Chef. I mean, DeMarcus is going to just pound that in. Here we see a Gucci. Oh, what are you doing, my man? Picking up the second yellow. <laughs> There's no need for it at all. There's only a player. Boca Negra is behind there, the deepest man. Second yellow sent off. Bad decision by Gucci. Yeah, that's a terrible play now in stoppage time. U.S. trying to defend. Trigueno, the Guatemalan goalkeeper, gets up, tries to get something on it. It's still a 1-0 game. Now Tim Howard collects it. That's a hard-fought victory for the U.S. team. Onyewu, though, wow, what a bad red card. Well, the USA victorious 1-0 uh, against Guatemala. And having a look at those uh, stats, uh, Shep, a, a very physical game. Yeah, and I think that's not something the USA team wanted. They knew Guatemala was going to sit back behind the ball. Guatemala wanted to get into a foul fest, try and break up the rhythm of the game. They did that, and they gave the U.S. team a scare. Mm, tw well, 26 fouls there. I think it was uh, four red cards. Uh, well, yeah, four, four red cards to two. And also, sorry, four yellow cards to two. Yellow. I was going to say four red cards. Uh, That's all right. <laughs> that, was, that was USA. Italy we can't send you off, mate. You're all right. <laughs> a red card for you. A red card for me. Well, the one but, thing that stands out, Dennis, as well in this game is, uh, you know, you talk about as a coach, from a coaching perspective, and we see we say Bob Bradley's in a situation. He's had four wins and a draw. Now he's the head coach. The Neil Galati's given him that, that title. But he goes into this match. He must have some concerns when he thinks about, hey, we didn't really manage the game 90 minutes. Well, we got mm. the result. We got the three points. But did we walk off the field saying, and, hey, we really controlled that game. I don't think so. And the other problem is as well, why give them opportunities in behind? You're playing it with a 10-man system now because of Gooch. The decisions, the lack of discipline that was on that, that on that field for me was a major concern for the U.S. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, John makes a good point because you have to manage the game. You've got the lead. Okay, Onyewu gets the red card, but they could have managed that game better. Now, I'm sure Bob Bradley's saying, okay, I tweak some players, I'm experimenting. I also don't like Landon Donovan out wide on the right side of the field. I agree with John that he belongs tucked in. Give him the freedom to run at the defense. Exactly, Shep. You're limiting his ability. This is a player that's very creative. He's quick off the ball. His first touch is fantastic. You know, that's why he's so dangerous in Major League hmm. Soccer. Let him play. Give him that free roll. Love well, to see that. Well, if we break down uh, some of the plays, uh, some of the some of the features of the game are, of course, uh, Dempsey's goal. Some fantastic work there. Uh, a great ball out to the far left side, and Twelman a, a fantastic run. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is a thing beforehand too. When we talk about it, the U.S. pushing forward, advancing, really took it to them in the first half here. There's a great, great run again from Twelman. The feed from Demarcus Beasley. And then to have the finishing touch there was fantastic. This is even more important, Chef. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great – see, people don't realize what a subtle, great move that is. Landon Donovan trying to manage the game, whips the ball back. Michael Bradley slips it to Demarcus Beasley. Now watch Beasley. He's going to whip an early ball into the box. Clint Dempsey doesn't get it on goal, but that's tremendous from a tactical point of view. Slow up the game, calm down, and then go to goal. And this is something, Chef, that should be a little bit better. It's three-quarters of the way through, and there's a longer ball trying to relieve some pressure there. Twelman needs to be that second striker, getting that flick-on header from Eddie Johnson, who just came on as a sub probably about six minutes prior to that. And then they can keep possession. If they keep mm. possession from that, that clearance from uh, Tim Howard, that's a different game. But what ends up happening is Guatemala 
gets an opportunity to stick more pressure on the, the U.S. defense, mm. put that ball on the other end at half, and Boca Negra now, who's trying to keep a high, tight line, <coughs> he has to drop off 10, 15 yards and try to recover. That's emergency defending. You don't need that, especially mm. 65 minutes, well, 70 minutes into the game. Let's not take anything away. A, a win is a win. But uh, Bradley, and we're talking about Bob Bradley here, he won't be happy with that performance. No, absolutely not. He can't be happy with that performance. But I mean, this is a side here that should be dominating a, a Guatemalan mm. team, especially even if they are going to pack it in, and it makes it very difficult. You have to really change the point of attack quickly and use the wing space to get balls into the box to really break down a shell that's going to be 10 men back behind the ball. And people know that all over it, the world. It, it is. It's the width that will, uh, well, that will break down the 10 men? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the point. And it's the guy in the middle of the field. You know, I get back to the two young players <laughs> yeah, that were really yeah. the holding midfielders and, and and you coach one of them at the under 20 yep. but to start Michael Bradley and I think Michael Bradley is a terrific player yep. but you're starting two youngsters in that holding position in the midfield that's the guy that's yep. going to really dictate the pace of the game absolutely and Benny Fieldhaber I did like Chef said got to work with him in the 2005 as an mm. assistant with Ziggy Schmidt in the Youth World Championships and this is where Benny really got exposed on the world stage he was seen there gets an opportunity to play in Germany with Hamburg does a very good job he has matured as a player and we're seeing that now but is it the right combination of players playing next to each other and that's the, that's the main concern I think from Shep and I and probably a lot of other fans as well and pundits around the country well John you're on the team with the uh, coaching staff uh, with Red Bulls in New York is aspiring to possibly doing something with the U.S. national team, giving something back to the team you played for, something you'd like to do? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, no. I, I thought maybe I mean, you said, no, look, I, I think I don't if, want you, to. if you don't have those, um, you know, those goals down the road and expectations, then why are you actually coaching? I mean, yeah, yeah, I would love to coach my national team one day. When that time is right, it would be a tremendous honor to do so. There's a lot of good coaches that are out there. Bob Bradley is a good coach. Um, his time could be now. He deserves mm -hmm. that, you know, that opportunity. He's done well with them. And, look, if it comes down the road and I get a chance, yeah, I'm going to jump at that chance for sure. And if I, oh, if sorry, I own the yeah. team, I'm, I'm hiring John Hawks because, <laughs> yeah. really, it, it says something. This has something. cost me a lot of money on this show. I mean, <laughs> ship, just keep that in your pocket there. Keep it real. Yeah, moving on. When you've done it at <laughs> the right. club level, when you've done it at the international level, when you have the respect of the players and you can really – uh, be a leader on, on, mm. on that team. Uh, I believe in this guy. But as for the tournament, Gold Cup, the U.S. against Guatemala, okay, they got the job done. Now they have to build on it. They have to do better. Very well, good point. One, one Very thing good point. we noticed though, in, in the first half of that game, uh, the USA incredibly disciplined. I think there was uh, just, just one yellow card there. But then the, the second half, it just turned into a, a yellow card fest. What, what happened? Well, that's exactly what happened because the U.S., instead of uh, keeping the ball, keeping possession, using the width of the field, they got caught up in a foul pass. That's really what Guatemala wanted. And again, I, I come back to uh, Gooch, Anyewu. I mean, it's unacceptable for me. Landon Donovan got cracked around, gets into a little shoving match with his friend, Carlos Ruiz. And this is the play, John. Bocanegra was back. He already knew he had a yellow card. Why take the chance? You're really hurting your team. Red card, going to miss a game. Now Bob Bradley's got to shift to that four. Absolutely, Shep. And there's something that I don't want to digress from the situation as well, but this is something that the U.S. needs to get better at. They need to be more mature and disciplined on the field. It happened in the World Cup as well, and you see Pablo Mastrioni and Eddie, John, uh, Eddie Pope getting the yeah. second yellow cards against Italy. This is going to hurt your side. You've got to be able to not only manage the game and play through that, but stay together as a team and know what your responsibilities are to the rest of the players around you. He shouldn't be doing plays and, like that and, and getting sent off. And saying that about the World Cup in particular, like you Everyone knows about that game with Italy, but I actually thought the U.S. really stood up because the Italians were, were really trying to outmuscle the U.S. And I thought, good on you, boys. That was yeah, great. Absolutely. I mean, that's something different. I mean, when you come back to the Gold Cup, and that's what we're really focused on here, is that this is something that needs you need to progress, and you're looking for development in a player, number one. And when you've got players that are playing in leagues around the world and they're getting experience, you expect that from them. That's a situation. Those are moments. That's what makes up the game. And if you don't manage it properly, it's going to hurt you down the line. So that's one thing that Bob Bradley, I'm sure, has gone back to the drawing board sure. and saying, video evidence that doesn't need to be happening neither does that Beasley you've got to do better with the ball here and finish those chances and put the ball away they should be mm. three four nil with that game prior to the uh, to the loss of discipline in that game what did you think of the defensive combination well I, you know there's a lot of depth on this U.S. roster right now so Frankie Haydock out wide right Bornstein I like him at left back and, you know, you've got some options in the central part of the defense. But, but again, you know, for Anyewu to be out, now Bob Bradley has to shift things around. you got to look at Demerit, right, the youngster who's mm. over in England. So he got put into the game when the red card happened. Mm. Bob Bradley's got some options. But 
I think there's depth in the back line. I'm more concerned of those holding guys in yeah. front of the back four. And this is a situation, too, like last night in Major League Soccer. You know, you have the Houston Dynamo playing against Colorado Rapids. Yep. Pablo Mastrioni, who has been, as what we just mentioned about as well, he has been a holding midfielder at times for the U.S. side. So is this a situation? Is he going to get released from his club and come in? Right. You know, that, and maybe he can play that role. Now, the one thing, putting our, our Guatemala hat on, um, how would Gomez be feeling at that game? Would it be a, a, possibly a moral victory, just uh, allowing the U.S. to only score one, or a loss is a loss, it doesn't matter? Yeah, I'll tell you what, and we said it before, I think Guatemala is in trouble in 2005, Gold Cup, they didn't mm. get out of the group play, and I think they would have loved to be able to manage that game 0-0. Zero, zero. I think they could do better. I mean, I like the Guatemalan team. I had, you know, John and I disagree a little bit. Carlos Ruiz, I mean, he's a lightning rod. <laughs> As a player, you hate the guy because, oh. you know, he's nasty. He'll initiate the contact. But I like him. I like him because he's a guy that you could play off of. He could play with his back to the goal. And, and your boss, Bruce Arena, <laughs> said, know. you know, he's a better player now as he gets older because mm. he runs less, but he's a better goal scorer. So, right. hey, Guatemala, yeah. though, but Back against the wall. Here's the thing, though, Shep, and this is where, you know, just to touch upon where we disagree in certain situations. When he's a player and he's on your side, you probably like him. Yeah, you love him. When yeah. he's on the other team, <laughs> he's a pain in the you-know-what. And uh, mm. he's very, you know, he gets these little cheap shots in off the ball. And I think this goes back to, again, the comments earlier that Dennis was saying a very physical team, uh, a very physical game, sorry. But Shep and I both agree that the U.S. got caught up in that. They played the mind games. They got through into the heads of the U.S. defenders and also the midfielders throughout this match. And that's something that he disrupted the way they played. The U.S. did not play their game. They played the Guatemalans game in the second half, all right? And mm. that's what they need to get away from. Don't worry, Sonny and Crockett never agreed on Miami Vice either all the time. Yeah, right. but we're a team. <laughs> that's all right, man. All right. We're a team. When, when we return we're a team on that can fight and disagree. That's all right. That's what the show's about, son. <laughs> when we return on Inside the Gold Cup, we talk to one of the most successful coaches in the competition. Work like a pro. Play like a pro. Tackle tough jobs. Dominate the game. Destroy the competition. Go professional. Choose Makita. Gatorade Sports Science Institute. We test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. Welcome back to Inside the Gold Cup, uh, where it is my pleasure to introduce Bora Milutinovic. Now, Bora, your record speaks for itself. You've coached, in this particular Gold Cup tournament, you've coached Mexico, the USA. You've also coached another side that's in this tournament, Costa Rica, Honduras, and now the coach of Jamaica. You've won the, tour uh, you've won the tournament twice, once with Mexico, once with the USA, and been in the three finals uh, for 1991, 93, 1996. Tell me, what was it like... Let's start at the very start. What was it like coaching in 1991 when the Gold Cup was new? Well, you understand, the first time they tell me they go to play Gold Cup, what is the Gold Cup, you know, mm. this first Gold <coughs> Cup ever. It was very exciting, but uh, if you make comparison, the, the 15 years, there's a big difference. I remember the tournament was only in L.A. Uh, every day the game, not so much public, every, every, everything was different, but I was so happy normally. First time ever USA we win. First, mm -hmm. we win in semi-final Mexico 2-0. After in the final game against Honduras, we, we tie 0-0. After the decision was for penalty kick. We win 4-3. Mm -hmm. But the Honduras and uh, USA, we, we miss, everybody missed four penalties. Incredible. <laughs> so many penalty miss, but uh, 
was important for the team, for the future, the, the soccer or football in USA, this win in the Gold Cup. When it, <coughs> when it comes to a tournament like the Gold Cup and penalties, is it something that you practice going into the semi-finals or the quarter-finals or the final, or do you just leave it up to the players on the day? Let's play. Let's play. Let's play. <laughs> but I tell you that this is, I think, the only, the, I think is penalty kick is question the emotion. If you mm. control your emotion, is everything is easier. But the problem, how you got to control emotion for this, the player who have good personality, who think positively, who know what he need to do is much more easier to score the goal. The problem when you don't know to control your emotion is very difficult to score a goal. Now, in 1991, you mentioned that uh, the USA beat Mexico 2-0. I think that was the first time in at least 11 years. 1980 was the last time. Did you celebrate there or you couldn't? You had the final to go to. Or was How proud did you feel um, achieving that result with the USA? You, you know. <laughs> I was so, no, you, you know, uh, I, I was so proud for first for the team, the personality, the team was great. All stadium was Mexican, maybe, maybe 500 American, but it was more, much more important after the game. The public, uh, uh, I think Mexican public have so, so big respect for me, you know. Before the, this uh, World Cup, I was a Mexican coach. 86, we played so many <coughs> games in California, but I'm proud. I was happy. Very uh, difficult to explain my emo emotion, how I was. But uh, this is maybe one of the happiest days, <laughs> the, the coaching. Well, you mentioned you also coached Mexico, and they, they picked you up again, and uh, you're in the uh, 93 Gold Cup and 96 with Mexico. I don't like to speak the, the World Cup, uh, pardon, the Gold Cup 93. We lose 4 0. Oh, that was, you know, okay. the, that was with the, the USA, but not... Full, <laughs> full stadium, mm -hmm. incredible, full stadium. The other side is my friend Miguel Mejia Barón. <laughs> we spoke before the game, but early our players, they make it the best, but Mexico have a very good team. After I come back in Mexico, I was so happy. The third Gold Cup to be finalist mm -hmm. with the team. If we win all game, we don't receive goal, he won. Big fi final, we win the uh, Olympic team from Brazil. This also was <laughs> very exciting. Now, you're uh, in New York at the moment. Uh, are you here to watch some of the games in the Gold Cup? Uh, yesterday, I was in Miami. I watched a game Costa Rica against, against Canada. I watched this game with, with interest. Uh, you know, I like to, to follow the CONCACAF uh, teams. Also, it's uh, very important for me for, t for future to see Mm. Uh, against who you play, how they play, the game was very good. Of course, that's as, as the coach of Jamaica. Now, Costa Rica, a team that uh, you coached, uh, oh, what now, 17, 18 years ago now. Were you surprised at the result? 70 years. <laughs> 70 years. But this still is, a young looking <coughs> man, though. Yeah. Still a young looking man. But the man. Medford was uh, one of the most important players in my team yesterday. He mm. was at the bench. Yes, true. Uh, yes, Were you yes. surprised they lost to Canada? If I don't see a game, surprise. Mm. But I watch game, I think the Canada was a better team. Mm. Well, Canada was a better team. What is uh, also very interesting, Canada uh, don't play uh, Canadian way, the long ball, mm. uh, running behind the ball. But they play very good technically, very good position the ball. They scored uh, two <coughs> excellent goals. It was very nice to see one uh, Canadian to, uh, team to play this way. How has the uh, the Gold Cup tournament progressed since that very first one in 1991? Now we have the program, we have everything. <laughs> we have promotion, we have everything. But the, you know, first uh, Gold Cup was uh, different, but I think it's excellent uh, to play around the country. I think that the, so many people uh, have interest uh, for the soccer or for football, for of uh, so many Latin people to play in this important city like in New York, like New York, Miami, LA, mm. Chicago, Houston, uh, Boston. Uh, mm. Very important to uh, this way to promote team. I think also it's very good to know have the team the outside uh, the the CONCACAF to give more opportunity the, the the teams normally we don't play. Now, two teams you know very well are the USA and Mexico, two teams that you've uh, coached formerly. 
How do you think, uh, let's start with the USA, how do you think uh, they will go in this, uh, in this year's edition of uh, the Gold Cup? The, I, I think the, after 91, the USA soccer growing so much. Mm. The, the World Cup 2002, the, the USA finished eight. I think this is the biggest result, the best mm. result ever for the USA soccer. Now it's a new generation. The other day I watched the game. I don't know so many mm. players, all young. They beat China 4-1. They play very well, very good discipline. I think it uh, will be very exciting to see the, the final, possibly Mexico, Mexico and uh, USA. Well, Mexico uh, playing uh, here <coughs> in uh, New York. How do you think they will, uh, will fare in this year's tournament? New coach, excellent player. Mexican, Mexican team have everything to be winner. Uh, also, but Mexico come back in this stadium. I like to remember mm. uh, in, in, this, uh, in this stadium, the, the source, some player or some people remember Mm. 94 World Cup against Bulgaria. Uh, Hugo is there, some, uh, so many young, new players. I like to remember the Mexican team, they have the players from uh, championship uh, uh, winner in, the, in Spain, uh, Germany, Holland, and Greece. Never mm. happened before. Mm. Yeah, I think now is, I, I, I think Mexico have a chance to seize moment in this tournament. Now, you mentioned uh, Hugo Sanchez, uh, it's his, his first tournament, a, a new coach. <coughs> how, how important is it for him to do well at this particular tournament? Or what sort of emotions would he be feeling at this, uh, the Gold Cup? But the Mexico, <laughs> uh, before was the most important mm. country, the best team. After this change after USA now is, uh, I think, the lead of this uh, CONCACAF soccer. Mm. But I believe this is the moment for Mexico to come back in the first position. The, why? They have ambition normally. Uh, they have so many good young players. Never Mexico have so good mm. players like now. Hugo is there. They have supported, they have everything, and everything to, be, uh, to come back to be winner. Is there a lot of pressure on Bob Bradley or Hugo Sanchez? I don't believe. No, no, no pressure. Depends how you are. <laughs> <coughs> I think the stress, how the people could, don't exist if you know to control your emotion, if you prepare good your team. Is, but this is the difference between the coaches. Uh, if you have, you don't have pressure. Tell me, what, uh, what have these uh, gentlemen all got in common? De Los Cobos, Guimaraes, Medford, John Hawks, Hugo Sanchez. You. My, my love, <laughs> my love. How, how, how do you feel having coached all, all these, uh, these players uh, that have gone on to be coaches in their own no, right? Like you take John Hawks, for example, now he's close with you. He's incredible. <laughs> I remember so many games, the way the goal he scored against Italy. But you was the boy mm. uh, against Italy, he scored a beautiful goal. But after Hugo Sanchez, he started to play in the Pumas with me when I was uh, coach. Uh, De Los Cobos, he played for work, uh, Mexican World Cup 86 after he was the coach together with me. Guimaraes, Guima played for Costa Rica mm. 19. After I have met for who played for Costa Rica 90. is Sorber, who played 94, now is a coach <laughs> in the USA team. It's all friends. <laughs> and for this, I'm sure my somebody got to win. For this, I got yeah. to win. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know who, who, I don't know who, but somebody got to win. Do you think some of the things that you do as a coach, uh, they might have picked up and they do with their teams? For this, they are very right. Uh, <laughs> you know, for, for this, they are now responsible, the team, I, I joke, but uh, <laughs> I think uh, everybody can learn something. Mm. I hope they learn something for myself, for the team when we work. Mm. But uh, it's very important, everybody, I see that they have the concept, the, 
the, the, the, the, the play very positively, offensively, good attitude. I am sure we got to see very good games. Now in 2009, at the next edition of the Gold Cup, will we see you with Jamaica? Sure. Yeah? Sure, sure. I, I got Confident? To, uh, normal confidence, you know. In Jamaica, I'm very excited to work. With the, I have a very good player, very good uh, people. Normally, now only we can watch the Gold Cup. We miss this Gold Cup, but I'm sure we got to have a very good team in the future. All right, well, Bora, thank you very much uh, for coming in. Far <laughs> It was a pleasure. Fair. When we come back, uh, it's more from inside the Gold Cup. At the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, we test athletes in the lab. we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. Work like a pro. Play like a pro. Tackle tough jobs. Dominate the game. Destroy the competition. Go professional. Choose Makita. I'm working with two crazed individuals. Welcome along to Inside the Gold Cup. We're, uh, we just spoke with Bora Milutinovic and uh, John, you had the opportunity to work with him. Chef, I'm sure you've worked with him, speaking of crazy, but what a character, fantastic guy. Fantastic character. The only problem <laughs> is he speaks 75 languages, so you don't know what he's really saying. And, when, and he only... He brings the language thing into a question. When you give him a very good question, he doesn't know the answer. So he's like, I don't understand. And then uh, we need to spoke. So he's, uh, but now, what a great guy. Uh, fantastic coach. Did a great job with us in 1994 World Cup. Got to work with him only a short period of time because I was at Derby County. We went for a long season that year for promotion final. Uh, came back. I was only with him for probably three weeks out of the year. And that's when Kobe Jones and the rest of the boys got 52 caps that summer. <laughs> but anyway, but Bora, fantastic guy. Yeah, nutty professor, but but you, you know what? You can't you can't very question. good quote. That is you can you cannot question his success at the right. national team Absolutely. level. He's well, been terrific. He's, he's done fantastic in the Gold Cup alone. I think he just dropped that one game, the USA Mexico 4-0 in uh, 1993, I believe. Yeah, I remember but, that uh, one. But he's taken uh, four teams at, at the World Cup past the first round. Uh, the only one he hasn't uh, done anything with was. Uh, China, they got knocked out in the in the first round, so five teams. So, in what total. are you saying, Dennis? Is he losing his touch? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I mean, you just fantastic. interviewed him, no, and no, now you're saying you're losing. No, his... no, 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 no. There's no, right. no question about the man's record. But how how does he get to coach that many teams? Oh, he's a gypsy in the night, basically. <laughs> he comes in and uh, no, never mind. Scratch yeah. that. No, he uh, look. He, he's like like Shep said. His rep reputation precedes him, and I think that you know once he has success with one national team and he's able to pull things off like he did with Costa Rica. Back to 1990, uh, Italia, the cup. He brought a team that was kind of in disarray a little bit, organized them, gave them a little bit of inspiration, and they end up coming out against Scotland and beating them and upset them really 1-0 mm. in 1990. So it goes from there, strength to strength. He gets yeah. that opportunity, he moves on to the next, next well, national Yeah, side. but he's also an opportunist, so he knows oh, yeah. when to come in when a national team has he, uh, some of the elements there. Sniffs out the he situations. Could, he could he smell where he could come in yeah. and tweak it so Jamaica, the yeah. Rag boys are for in for example, a treat. I was going to say, yeah. exactly, for example, with Jamaica, they don't qualify for the Gold Cup uh, out, of, out, of the, you know, out of the Caribbean. So, um, so he picks he up the teams in. that are in the Eddie's bargain basement sale. <laughs> he picks up those teams that know that they, they can only get better. But mm. at the same time, he is talented, and yeah. he organized them. And he gave a lot of confidence to the 1994 team. I mean, a lot of players that were still playing in the U.S., I believe maybe seven of us were in mm. Europe at the yeah. time. Yeah. You know, Tab Ramos, Eric Winalda, you know, Paul Caligiuri, Ernie Stewart, those players coming back. 
but the Lexi Lawlesses and those guys were playing domestically yeah. here in the U.S. Give them confidence, let them play. I would love yeah. to hear a conversation between Bor Milutinovic and John Hawks <laughs> when he's putting on a Scottish accent. But, <laughs> but there are certain coaches, John, and I think you'll agree that it just they're innately better at the national team level than they are with a club team. Absolutely, and I would say so, one thing, too, about Bor that not a lot of people um, really talk about. He's very analytically inclined, and he will break down plays and have you watch videotape as much mm. as you can every single day until you know that player their weakness and how you can really play and, and get a result against him. He does it very well. Well, Good. speaking of Caribbean sides, uh, Trinidad and Tobago up against El Salvador. All sorts of trouble uh, for Trinidad and Tobago with, uh, with the uh, 2006 World Cup team uh, arguing over bonuses. Absolutely, and this is a problem that they've had going back there. You know, Vim Reisberger, we, we talk about your, your ex-teammate at the New York Cosmos, has his hands full. Not only does he have not a great selection situation where he can't have maybe, I think it was 16 players, if I'm wrong, correct me, um, no, no. that Spot were on. not all part of the squad. And uh, they're on this pending lawsuit. And, uh, you know, they don't have them. And then the, the travel situation as well. Too Jeff, that was a nightmare. He, he can't come into the States. He's detained at, uh, what's it called, the George Bush something or other center or something Yeah, like that, that would be uh, an airport in Houston. Oh, okay. But yeah, anyway. There you go. We're in, we're in <laughs> That's America. what happens when you have a Kiwi yeah, host. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well so, uh, George Good Bush stuff. something. Or, okay, all right. No, fair enough. Now, if uh, we have a look at the teams, though, uh, let's have a look who Trinidad and Tobago did have to take the field. And uh, Silvio Spanner, uh, one of the players that we uh, highlighted in the preview show. And um, Daryl Roberts, uh, another fantastic one. But uh, Spanner is the man. Well, I'll tell you, they were counting on Glasgow up front. They were counting on Daryl Roberts. He's got experience, but we talked about their head coach. I mean, he's got a team that's in disarray, and when you look at that lineup, where are the goals going to come from, and also, can you be solid enough on the, on the defensive side of the ball? Those were the question marks Vim had coming into the game. Well, with El Salvador, I guess uh, De Los Cobos, uh, a fairly unknown side to myself because we don't see a lot of El Salvador in my part of the world, but uh, a fantastic team when they took the uh, field. But uh, Quintinha, uh, just the sensational. Yeah, very good. And actually, uh, Quintinha, I'll tell you what, experience, I even got to work with him. I was a director of youth development at DC United. This is a player that can really turn on a dime. I mean, great feet. I mean, good vision as well. Smaller, really petite on the field, Chef, but he still makes a difference, and especially in this game against Trinidad and Tobago. He was a difference maker. He came out, wanted the ball all the time, great left foot, and, I mean, he caused a lot of problems for him. Well, in the game, uh, I mean, Heber comes out, uh, I think it was six or seven minutes. He's out. Uh, Sanchez goes in there. I thought uh, the game was all over for El Salvador, but just what a fantastic substitution. Great to substitution. Make. Well, I, I mean, it was nothing you could do. You have to go to the bench early. I don't think they were counting on it. Before the game, though, you have to remember El Salvador had had, uh, you know, a woeful time in terms at the international level scoring goals. They were in a goal-scoring drought. So we really didn't know what to expect. It turned out well for El Salvador. Well, let's see how the Soka Warriors got on against El Salvador. Yeah, it was a crazy game in terms of giveaways at the back. Look at Trinidad and Tobago. Give that ball away. That's the play we talked about. Quintanilla hits a rocket with the left foot. That's a save. Now coming the other way. Free kick. Trinidad Tobago spun. You can't <laughs> hit a ball any better than that. Watch it, John. Goalkeeper gets a touch it off does. the post and in. A keeper Pump. does well there, Ship, but at the same time, look at this. This is an incredible effort. What a free kick. Yeah, that's one of the Brilliant. best goals we've seen. But El Salvador again. Quintanilla, far post. Larios keeps it in play to sub. Sanchez, watch him take it out of the air. Puts it away. That's a tremendous performance by El Salvador. Wasn't over yet. Look at this, though. Trinidad and Tobago. How bad a ball is that out of the back? Uh, no discipline at all. Lazy ball. And what does it lead to? Yes, the opening goal right here. Look at this. Take a look at this. The ball comes back in here. Second goal, I'm sorry. Bad display again of defending at the near post. And then here it is, the finish. Yeah, that's just a shocking job at the back. Vin Reisenberg's. Getting gray hair over this, a sliding tackle. They can't get the ball. Anytime it's bouncing around in the six-yard box, you're in trouble. And this was, this was the problem the whole time, Shep. We talked about the defending, the discipline, and this, on both sides of the ball, not just from Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. but also, you know, from El Salvador. They were having a hard time getting clearances out, but just making sure of the play, and it was coming back at them, putting more pressure on the defensive side of the game. But you can't, I'll tell you, you give a lazy ball away like mm. that. 
you're going to get punished. And I mean, I, I don't care. But at the Gold Cup level now, the teams are better. The players are better individually. They're going to hurt you when you give balls away. And, and that one certainly led to the second goal. John, <laughs> I, I agree with you 100%. But you talk about two teams that are really in disarray. We've both played against El Salvador. They're a different team. When you have to go down to San Salvador and mm. play, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you're in a world of hurts. But yeah. when they're on the road, these are all El Salvadorian-based players, nobody playing abroad. Uh, if you look at them, they got the win. They know Guatemala, Guatemala had just lost the game before, right. so they're in great shape in the group. You're right. Very good approach to the game. They come mm. out with the win, and they put themselves in a better position now going into the next match. Now, if, uh, if we talk about statistics, corners, set pieces, free kicks, things like that. We saw a fantastic one from Spain. But if, uh, if you've got eight corners, uh, as Trinidad and Tobago did, you really want to work on that, and you really want to score from them. I think it's 73% of, of all goals in internationals are scored from set pieces. Well, well, this is the thing, Dennis, and it's a good point, really, when you talk about Vin Breisberg and all the work that he's trying to do to organize his side, at least have something set on set plays. I mean, that's where you're mm. going to maybe get a goal and win the game. You've got to have the set plays organized and make the most out of it. Make it count. You hear it from coaches all the time. Make sure we're organized, boys. When we get in the box, timing of runs, make sure the support's there. You know when the timing is going to be played from the ball in the corner. You make the most of it. And they didn't. Mm. They didn't really. They did put the pressure on at times, but the corner kicks really didn't come about. Yeah, I don't know where our Kiwi friend got 73%, it's, but, it's, but a, if it, yeah. it's an inordinate number uh, percentage of goals right. scored off set pieces. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. And you know, Reese Bergen, I mean, an ex Dutch Holland international, so he is focused, organized didn't have his team playing right. the same way. No, mm -hmm. definitely not. And, well, you talked about organization, you talked about discipline. Uh, one thing that was uh, you could see definitely in that game was some of the poor passing and some of the defensive errors <laughs> from, from the men at the back. Yeah, and this is something that even Shep saw in the highlights beforehand. Again, the, the giveaways here. I mean, just taking the risks. Why are you taking the risks? And then Quintanilla goes on and hurts him. Again, Shep, the same player. Yeah, and again, you're a coach, John. You know you're telling your team you got to be safe at the back. You can't give the ball away. El Salvadorian defender slip and top of the box. Look at this giveaway. Pow. Wow, that's that's just awful. Roberts gets into the box. Could have been a penalty kick. Same guy, Thomas. Yeah. A diagonal 40-yard ball across the field. A giveaway. That's just that's just awful. And, and this is something that didn't happen once in a while. It happened throughout the game. And, it, and whether it happens, especially like you said, Chef. And here's the bang. You, you finish it up, you're going to get hurt. And that's it. It's 2-1. Mm. You're down. And you, you walk away the field and you say, what could we have done better? And that's the distribution out of the back. So yeah, and you know, a lot of players, a lot of people watching that say they look at the goal, but they don't see coaches think about where did that goal start. It right. started with a what giveaway the at the back. Yeah. What I don't understand is, uh, as, as you saw, uh, Dennis Alas scored that, great name, that boy, uh, scored that goal. But uh, we, we were the Trinidad and Tobago midfielders uh, covering him, coming back for that second phase ball just in case their defense didn't clear it. Yeah, but enough. Dennis, this is the thing, though. You can't be taking chances like that. That ball shouldn't have been played. It's going from sure. right to left across the pitch when players are probably putting themselves ahead of the ball, yeah. looking for a better position to receive it. And he makes a decision, Thomas. I'm going to stick this across the field. If you're going to stick it, overhit it. Hmm. Overhit right. the ball because if it goes out of bounds, at least we can get back behind the ball. Here comes the throwing. You're going to be all right. But when you underhit that ball, hey, there's all problems. People pick it off. They read the game well. They come in there, they cause havoc, and they just put more numbers into the box, and there's the goal, the final yes. goal. It's, it's a game of opportunity, and really, what do you do when you get a turnover, yeah. an unforced error? So Thomas, yeah. by looking up, he puts his whole team, his midfield, out of position, hits that diagonal ball. Now they're flustered. They don't know how to cover. They don't know how to get back. And, you know, in the end, that's the game-winning goal for El Salvador. And, and, it, and it is no matter what level of football you play at, that's one of the most frustrating things. We do all this hard work to win the ball back. Uh, you get it out wide and you think, okay, here we go. Right, let's start moving. And, and one of your players just gives it away like that. And you're thinking, what are you thinking? Yeah, absolutely, Dennis. And that's a good point because once you, you earn the right to get the ball back, then you earn the right to play. And mm. don't make the wrong decision. Play the correct ball <laughs> and keep it, you know, just keep possession. And that's one thing that you, the, the team needs to be better at, both teams, really, when uh, you look I, at it. Uh, you know, we saw the defensive woes, but I give El Salvador a lot of credit. Really, oh, they have, awesome. they've no, yeah, never, it, never done well I agree. away good, from good home. Win, good win for them. Yeah. You know, Big that, they're happy oh, with and it. They've, they've, they've placed themselves as well to get uh, through to the next round of the tournament. And we come back, we have a look at uh, who does El Salvador face, who does the USA face, Trinidad and Tobago, and Guatemala. Like a pro. Play like a pro. Tackle tough jobs. Dominate.
played the game. Destroy the competition. Go professional. Choose Makita. At the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, we test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. Welcome back to Inside the Gold Cup, where Group B matches concluded yesterday. And if we look at the standings, I uh, must admit I'm a little bit surprised. El Salvador on top of that group uh, ahead of the USA with Trinidad and Tobago and Guatemala down the bottom. Where to next for El Salvador? They've got Guatemala ship. Uh, how do they go into this tactically? Yeah, I, I think that's a good question. And the point is, really, for El Salvador, they can change it up a little bit. I mean, they got a great result. So now Guatemala has not shown that they can play a wide open game, get out, spread the field, and get forward. If you're El Salvador, you could slow it down, try and manage the game. If you get a goal, you get a goal. If you don't, you know you have, you can get a draw, get a point, and you got Trinidad next, so El Salvador in a great spot. And John, for the, for the USA, um, uh, they of course face Trinidad and Tobago, the Soka Warriors. What's going through Bob Bradley's mind? Well, he's obviously got an obvious change uh, in the back there, but uh, what else might he change for this game? Well, yeah, absolutely. He's got to make changes in the back with uh, on Onyebu getting sent off, and that, that's a shame because now they've got to shift the whole back line. They had Frankie Hayda come in there for a little period of time as a centre back, but he's not really comfortable there. <laughs> my my impression of the game and what Bob Bradley might try to do is he's got to come out and, and shut down Trinidad and Tobago, get early goals right away, and, comp and really compose themselves and control this match right from early on. They can't sit back. Go out, put them away, get Trinidad and Tobago out of the way, hopefully. And I'm not trying to say that they're a walkover team. They're not, but they are very wide open. They make a lot of bad mistakes in the back. Hey, go with Landon Donovan as an attacking midfielder or yeah. even as a second striker right now and let them run at the back line as well, much as possible. We saw Trinidad and Tobago hold Sweden in the World Cup, and they're very, very similar to the Guatemala game that we saw between the USA. Ten men behind the ball. If Trinidad and Tobago do that, Will Bob Bradley and his team have the answers to get out wide and to get around them and to break them down? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you got Demarcus Beasley on one side, and I'd like to see Dempsey get a little bit out wide. I mean, he's a guy that can take players on and get balls in the box as well. Open up the wing, sp wing play and break down the TNT shop, and mm. they're in there. Yeah, I don't think, I agree with John, I don't think Trinidad, Tobago, this team with this these players is anything that resembles the team in yeah. Germany. They don't have the ability to sit back, organize, and make it tough for the U.S. The U.S., if they spread the field wide, like John said, they have players in the middle of the field, like Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey, who can make things happen. I'm looking forward to it. If he, if he does start running at players <laughs> in the middle, I think that's a, a great suggestion. It would be, uh, he's really enjoyable to watch like that, Landon Donovan. Yeah, he's an exciting player, definitely. If uh, you would like to get in touch with us, any questions for the panel? Any questions about the Gold Cup, just uh, email us at mail at awesomeballs.com. I can't believe you thought of that. Shit. <laughs> and all fill the latest uh, schedule, news, anything you want to know about the Gold Cup, www.concacaf.com or www.goldcup.org. Now, thinking about uh, the USA, Trinidad and Tobago, Guatemala and El Salvador, when they meet on, on Saturday on the weekend, uh, could we see a, a bit of a change in the crowd uh, being, weekend, being the weekend? Uh, will the crowd play a part in these games? Yeah, absolutely. Let's hope the U.S. Uh, you know, come out and support us. I think Sam's Army is always there. They're, they're a great support group, and being in the Home Depot Center, why not? Hey, they're going to have more of an advantage against Trinidad and Tobago. Hey, fill up the stadium. I couldn't care less where the fans come from. These are great <laughs> games. Show up, pack the stadium. We'll have good dramatic events. And exciting well, games, that's the main thing right now. We're enjoying the action, oh, so the it's fan been fantastic so far. Great matches. And bring up more goals like Spans are absolutely amazing. Well, make sure you tune in tomorrow. We have Mexico and Cuba and also Panama and Honduras, the group of C matches here at the Gold Cup for 2007. The reproduction, distribution, publication, modification, public display, public performance, or transmission of this broadcast in any manner, in whole or in part, without the express written consent of CONCACAF, is strictly prohibited.